Welcome to Simply Explained English. I am Lisa. And I'm Eric. Do you want to improve your English easily? If so, you're in the right place. So let's get started and make English learning easy. Okay, Eric, what are the words today? The first word today is inevitable. Then we will continue with leap and embark on, then sort out. And the final one is hit the nail on the head. Great. Let's start with the first word. Sure. The first word we're going to explain today is inevitable. 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 Inevitable is an adjective and it means something that is certain to happen and cannot be avoided. So if something is inevitable, it will definitely happen no matter what. Exactly. We use inevitable when we want to say that something can't be avoided. Now let's look at the first example sentence. With so much traffic, it was inevitable that we would be late. It means that because there was so much traffic, being late was sure to happen. They couldn't avoid it. Here's another example. If you don't study for the test, failure is inevitable. This means that if you don't prepare for the test, failing is something that will definitely happen. You can't avoid it if you don't study. Let's talk a bit more about how to use inevitable. We often use it when we want to talk about something that is sure to happen, usually something negative or something we don't want. It's a strong word, so use it when you are sure about the result. Good explanation, Lisa. Now, let's move on to a short dialogue to show how inevitable can be used in a conversation. Did you see the game last night? Our team lost again. Yeah, after the other team scored twice, it seemed inevitable that we would lose. I agree. It was inevitable after we couldn't score in the second half. In the dialogue, Alex and Ben both used inevitable to talk about their team losing. Alex said, it was inevitable after the other team scored twice. Ben agreed, saying it was inevitable because their team couldn't score. Yes, and this shows that inevitable is often used when we talk about something not surprising because it was sure to happen, like losing a game or being late. So, Eric, do you think inevitable is a common word in English? It's somewhat common, especially in formal or serious conversations. You'll hear it in situations where people want to express that something is certain or unstoppable. I agree. It's a useful word, especially when you want to sound a bit more serious or formal. You might hear it in news reports, business meetings, or even in everyday conversations when discussing important things. Exactly. So remember, when you want to say that something is certain to happen and can't be avoided, you can use the word inevitable. Good summary, Eric. Okay, let's move on to the next word. Sure, Lisa. The next word is leap. 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 Leap is a verb that means to jump high or far. For example, the dog leaped over the fence. This means that the dog made a big jump from one side of the fence to the other side. The dog went from one place to another with one big jump. And here is another example. She leaped into the pool with excitement. It means that she jumped into the pool in a quick and happy way. She did not just walk in. She made a big jump into the water because she was excited. That's a good explanation. Also, we often use the word leap with over or into, like leap over a fence or leap into the air. It shows what you are jumping over or where you are jumping into. That's correct. Leap can also be a noun. For example, it was a big leap for him. Here, leap means a big or important jump. Good point, Lisa. Now let's use leap in a short conversation. Did you see that rabbit leap over the bush? Yes, it was such a high leap. 
I didn't know. Rabbits could leap that far. They leap like that when they are scared. It helps them escape from danger. Wow. I wish I could leap like a rabbit. In this dialogue, leap is used to talk about the rabbit's big jump over the bush. Yes, and when Emily says, it was such a high leap, she means that the rabbit jumped very high. Leap shows that the jump was big and quick. By the way, leap can also mean progress, success, or a big step towards something. For example, the new product was a big leap for the company. It means the new product led the company to big success. Good point, Eric. Now, let's talk about how common the word leap is. Do you think leap is a common word? I think leap is not as common as jump. Jump is used more often in daily conversation. But leap is a good word to use when you want to sound a bit more descriptive or talk about something bigger or more sudden. Yes, that's a good explanation. And I think leap is a little bit more formal than just saying jump, don't you think? Yes, leap sounds more dramatic than jump. It makes things sound bigger or more impressive. And remember, listeners, that leap can be both a verb and a noun. As a verb, it means to jump, and as a noun, it means a big jump. So it's a versatile word to know. Okay, I think we've covered the, the word leap enough. Let's move on to our next word. Our next word is embark on. Embark on. Embark on. The word embark on is a phrasal verb, and it means to begin a journey or start something new. For example, they embarked on a trip to the mountains. This means that they started a journey to the mountains. It shows the beginning of their trip. When we say embark on, it often means to start a journey or a new adventure. And here's another example. She decided to embark on a new career as a writer. This means that she started a new job or career as a writer. She is beginning something new in her life. Now, let's see how we can use embark in a short dialogue. I am so excited to embark on my journey around the world. That sounds amazing. When do you plan to embark on your adventure? Next month, I want to see new places and learn new things. I'm sure it will be an unforgettable experience. I hope to embark on a similar trip one day. In this dialogue, the word embark on is used to talk about starting a journey. David is excited to begin his trip around the world. He uses embark on because it describes starting something big or new. Now, let's discuss how common the word embark is. Eric, do you think embark is a common word in everyday conversation? I think embark on is a bit more formal than start or begin. It is often used when talking about travel, big projects, or something special. Yes, I agree. It's not a word we use every day, but it's a good word to know, especially when discussing new experiences or big plans. That's right. It adds a bit of excitement to what you are starting. Instead of just saying, start a journey, saying, embark on a journey sounds more adventurous. And that makes it useful for writing too. In stories or travel blogs, embark on can make the text more interesting. Definitely. And remember, when you use embark on, you start something, a trip, a project, or even a new phase in life. And I hope our listeners enjoyed learning about the word embark on today. I hope so, Eric. Let's move on to our next word. The next word is sort out. Sort out. Sort out. Sort out is a phrasal verb. It has two meanings. The first one is to solve a problem, and the second one is to organize something messy or confusing. It's a very useful phrase in everyday English. Eric, can you give us an example sentence? Sure. Here's our first example. I need to sort out my closet this weekend. 
It means that the person needs to organize their closet and make it tidy this weekend. Now it's your turn, Lisa. Here's my example. Can you help me sort out this misunderstanding? It means that the person is asking for help to solve or clear up a misunderstanding. It's important to note that sort out can sometimes be separated. For example, you can say sort it out or sort the problem out. Now, let's listen to a short conversation using sort out. Hey, sweetie, your room is a mess. I know, Mom. I'll sort it out after school. Okay, but don't forget. And can you also sort out your dirty laundry? Sure, I'll sort everything out before dinner. That was a great dialogue. Did you notice how they used sort out three times? Yes, I did. It shows how versatile this phrase can be. Eric, is sort out a common expression? It is very common, Lisa. People use it a lot in everyday speech. I agree. Do you think it's more formal or informal? Sort out is more informal. In formal situations, you might say resolve or organize instead. It's also a really useful phrase for talking about fixing problems or organizing things. Absolutely. It's a handy phrase to know. When do you use sort out most often, Eric? I use it a lot when talking about organizing my home or solving small problems at work. How about you? Same here. I also use it when I'm making plans with friends and we need to figure out details. All right, I think that wraps up our explanation of sort out. Let's move on to our last word today. Today's last word is hit the nail on the head. Hit the nail on the head. Hit the nail on the head. Hit the nail on the head is an idiom that means to say or do exactly the right thing or to describe something perfectly. It's a colorful way to say someone is exactly correct. Yes, Lisa. Let me give the first example sentence. When John said the project needed more time, he really hit the nail on the head. It means that John's comment about the project needing more time was exactly right. Now it's your turn, Lisa. Here's another example. She hit the nail on the head when she said the project was too big. It means that she was exactly correct when she said the project was too big. Good example. Now let's listen to a short conversation using hit the nail on the head. What do you think is the main theme of this book, Tom? I think it's about the importance of friendship in difficult times. Well done, Tom. You've hit the nail on the head. That's exactly right. Really? I'm glad I hit the nail on the head. I wasn't sure if I understood it correctly. That was a great dialogue. Did you notice how they used hit the nail on the head twice? Yes, I did. It shows how we use this phrase to praise someone for being correct. Lisa, is hit the nail on the head a common expression? It's fairly common, Eric. People use it when they want to emphasize that someone is exactly right. Is it more formal or informal, Lisa? Hit the nail on the head is more informal, Eric. In formal writing or speech, you might say precisely correct instead. People often use it in discussions or debates when someone makes a very accurate point. It's a fun way to agree strongly with someone. I agree. It's more interesting than just saying, you're right, isn't it? Definitely. It adds color to the language and makes conversations more engaging. Well said, Lisa. Remember everyone, idioms like this one make your English sound more natural and fun. Great point, Eric. Well, that wraps up our episode 92. We hope you found today's episode helpful. Thanks for listening. Keep studying your English. See you in the next episode. Bye for now.